My name is Adriana Vilela, and I am a CNCF ambassador, HashiCorp ambassador, blogger, and podcaster. I do have a day job. Um, I actually joined Dynatrace a little over a week ago. Woohoo! Um, I work in the observability and platform engineering space. I'm, a, I'm actually one of the maintainers of the Hotel End User SIG alongside Reese. And uh, by night, I like to climb rocks, so much so that I sprained my ankle almost two weeks ago. Hence the ankle brace here, um, which means I can't do any cool climbing in Salt Lake City, which makes me super sad. I also love capivadas. They make me super happy. OK. Hi, everyone. I'm Reese. I'm a senior developer relations engineer at New Relic. Um, like Adriana mentioned, we work together on the open telemetry end user SIG, where we're focused on uh, kind of connecting end users with project maintainers and helping drive that feedback loop. Um, so if you have an interesting story, we would definitely love to hear from you, because we do um, Q&As, we do sur uh, surveys, as well as other events such as open television practice. Wow. OK. Um, I also love horror movies, landscaping, and training jiu-jitsu. And let's get started. OK, so this is how we've organized our session for you today. We're going to go over an overview of the OpenTelemetry operator. Then we're going to get into how to install it, how to deploy the collector using the operator, and also how to use the operator to inject zero-code instrumentation into your Kubernetes pods. And along with those three sections, we're also going to cover commonly encountered issues, as well as troubleshooting tips for resolving them. Oh. Yes, and then we'll wrap up with a summary of key takeaways and also show references for further learning and experiments. All right, so what exactly is the operator and what does it do? The operator is primarily responsible for two things. The first is managing the deployment of your collector, uh, making sure the configuration is correct, and it also manages a fleet of open telemetry collectors uh, via OpAmp, which is a remote network protocol for managing large fleets of data collection agents. It also is responsible for injecting and managing the, managing the configuration of auto instrumentation into your pods. And Adriana is actually going to go over this piece more in depth in a little bit. OK, so what do we need to install the operator? And how do we do it? So this might seem obvious, but before you install the operator, you must have a Kubernetes cluster that you can um, install it into running on at least version 1.23. And next, this is less obvious. Um, you need either Cert Manager to already be installed in that cluster if you're going to use Cert Manager. And if you want to get around using Cert Manager, you just have to provision the TLS certificates in the right places. To install both the Cert Manager and Hel uh, sorry and the operator, you can use kubectl helm. We are not going to cover provisioning TLS certs in this uh, talk, but it will be included in our blog post, which we'll link later. So just for your reference here, we've included commands that you can use to install both the operator and um, cert manager using kubectl here for your reference. And then if you want to use helm, note that version 3.9 at least is required. And this step will take up to a few minutes. And then once that's done, you can install the operator. But um, if you are going to use Threat Manager, note that in either case, whether you use Goop, Cuddle, or Helm, you do need to wait until the op uh, sorry, Threat Manager has finished installing, or else the operator installation will fail. Once you have Threat Manager or the right um, TLS provisions set up, you can go ahead and deploy the collector. How many of you are familiar with what the collector Open telemetry collector is and what it does. OK, that's most of you all. Um, so we can just go over this slide briefly. Uh, the collector, for those of you who are less familiar, it's a versatile component that ingests telemetry from a variety of sources. It transforms that data according to how you've configured it, and then finally sends that off to one or more backends, um, any backends that can accept the open telemetry data format. Um, it's also supported by optional functionality called connectors and extensions. So the operator has a custom resource, or CR, that manages the deployment of the collector called OpenTelemetry Collector CR. And this is a sample. Um, there's a few things we want to highlight here. 
So first is the version V1 beta 1, and that is important for a reason that we will cover in just a minute. And then the client also, whoops, was open cell node collector. So depending on how you plan on instantiating it, there are many um, configuration options, but the basic configuration requires two things, and that is mode, which has to be one of these following four, deployment, sidecar, daemon set, or stateful set, and also the config attribute, which probably looks familiar because it's just the OTL collector YAML config. Oh, another thing we want to call it is if you are, if you specify the mode as sidecar, there are some additional things you'll need to do, um, which we'll cover as we go. In this case, you will need to add an annotation to your deployment YAML, and we've highlighted the section here. Okay, so what happens when you are, when you've deployed the open telemetry collector CR and things go sideways or you're not seeing any data at all? Let's take a look at some things you can do. So Kubernetes events provide detailed and chronological information about what's happening with various components of your cluster, uh, to view events for a specific namespace. That's something you can use. Obviously, replace namespace with your namespace. And also check whether your resources were successfully deployed. When an open telemetry collector resource is deployed, the following objects are created. The open telemetry collector, collector pod, if you specify non-sidecar mode, uh, Make sure you look for a deployment stateful set or daemon set resource with the following name. And if you deploy the collector as a sidecar container um, inside an application pod, it will have the name of OTC container. If you specified, oh, I already said that. No, wait, config map. Also look for a config map of your collector configs. Although for this piece, if you specify non sidecar mode, the collector config is included as an environment variable. Um, whereas for non sidecar modes, it's going to be included um, with the following name format. And finally, if you have enabled the target allocator, also look for a resource for that. Okay. So, first check that the open subject collector resource was deployed, check on your config maps. When you deploy the collector using the open telemetry collector resource, it creates a config map that contains the configurations um, of all the co collectors. Confirm that the config map was created in the same namespace as a collector and that the configurations themselves are correct. And then also depending on how you have specified the mode, we also recommend checking the, your collector pods and using the appropriate command based on which mode that you've specified. Next, check the collector CR version that you are using. So earlier we saw V1 beta 1 version. There is another one called V1 alpha 1. And there's a couple things we want to point out here, mainly that the config sections are different. So for V1 beta 1, the config values are part of the actual CR configuration, whereas for V1 alpha 1, the config is one long text string. But keep in mind that the text string still has to follow YAML formatting. And if you're using V1 beta 1, you cannot leave the collector config values empty. You have to specify either curly braces, um, empty curly bracket braces for scalar values, or empty square brackets for arrays, which is not necessary for V1 alpha 1. So by default, the collector CR uses the core distribution of the collector, which is the bare bones distribution that contains just the base set of um, components. If you want access to more components, you can absolutely use a Kubernetes distro, um, which is made specifically to be used in a Kubernetes cluster for monitoring Kubernetes and services running in Kubernetes. You can also build your own custom collector distro. And this is where you can specify the collector's base image. Also, if you are sending your telemetry to an observability backend, you will likely need to configure some kind of uh, access token or license key, so double check that you've configured that information correctly. And finally, confirm that you have configured the right endpoint for your observability backend. You might have um, regional uh, requirements that you need to look into. And with that, I will give it to Adriana.
Thank you, Reese. Okay, so, whoopsie. Um, so we talked about the hotel collector um, uh, resource, and now we're going to be talking about the auto instrumentation capabilities of the hotel operator. Um, but first, let's just do a quick little level set on what we mean by instrumentation. So instrumentation is the process of adding code to software to generate telemetry signals. Now, if you're familiar with open telemetry, you know that there are two ways to instrument your code. We have zero code or auto instrumentation. And this is basically whereby you do not have to touch your code to instrument your code. It is done for you. And this is done courtesy of bytecode or shims that intercept your code at runtime or compile time and will insert those lovely traces, metrics, and logs for you. And OTEL supports auto instrumentation for multiple languages including Java, .NET, Python, et cetera, for a full list of those supported languages. Along with more info on auto instrumentation, you can scan the QR code on your screen. Now, the other mode of instrumentation is manual instrumentation, which requires you, the developer, to go into your code and add those traces, metrics, and logs. So now we know that the OTEL operator supports auto instrumentation, and how exactly does it do that? So it does this by injecting auto instrumentation into your pods running your application code, and it does this courtesy of a lovely resource called the instrumentation resource, which you see right here. So this allows you to configure your auto instrumentation. Now I'll take you through what all this stuff means. First of all, note the API version. We have opentelemetry.io slash v1 alpha 1. And unlike the OpenTelemetry collector resource, there is just one version of this API. Now our kind is instrumentation. The next thing of note, as you'll see, there's an end section. So this is where you specify your open telemetry environment variables. And in case you're wondering what valid environment variables you can use, you can scan the QR code on the screen. That'll give you the full list. In addition, we also have uh, the exporter section where we specify our endpoint. So this is where we're sending our telemetry data to. So that can be an OTEL collector that's residing within your Kubernetes cluster or outside your Kubernetes cluster. And by the way, in case you're wondering about any of the fields in this instrumentation CR, you can scan the QR code on the screen for more details. Next, we have propagators. So this is the stuff responsible for your context propagation. There are different types of propagators. Um, you should specify at least one. You can specify more. We also have sampler. Now, if you want to do any sampling, this is where you would do your sampling configuration. And then finally, we have the section at the bottom that says Python env. And you might be wondering, another env section? What the hell? So this is language-specific environment variable configuration. So if you want to do some additional environment variables that you want just for your auto-instrumented Python code, this is where you would put it. Now, you might be wondering, what about Java? Well, if you want to do stuff for Java, you would add another section for Java with the environment variables that you want to pass for your auto instrument to Java code. And fun fact, you can have a single instrumentation resource if you want for any, even if you've got multiple um, auto instrumented languages that you want to auto, uh, multiple applications that you want to instru uh, auto instrument, you can have a single instrumentation resource and have definitions for all the languages that you want to auto instrument here. Or if you prefer, you can create multiple instrumentation resources and they can be in the same namespace or a different namespace as we'll see shortly. Now, this is just one piece of the puzzle that we need as far as auto instrumentation with the OTEL operator. So this is for defining your instrumentation configuration um, but we have to tell um, the operator, hey, what are we actually auto-instrumenting? And this is where we define it inside the deployment in this lovely area here called in the um, template metadata annotation. So we create a special annotation that's just for auto-instrumentation. And as you can see, it's instrumentation.opentelemetry.io slash inject-python. And so this basically says, hey, we're injecting Python auto-instrumentation into our application code but you better be damn well sure that you are actually auto-instrumenting Python code. Now, you notice that um, this is a value of true here, so we're saying that we're enabling auto-instrumentation. In case you're wondering if you're auto-instrumenting other languages, you would replace um, inject Python with inject Java or inject .NET, et cetera, et cetera. 
Now, um, as I said, we have this value of true, but that's not the only valid value that we have for this um, annotation. So the true value basically says, hey, hotel operator, I am looking for an instrumentation resource in the same namespace as my deployment. Go fetch me the configs. You can also say false. You know what? I'm turning off auto instrumentation for the time being. And then in case we have more than one instrumentation resource deployed in our namespace, in the same namespace as the deployment resource, well, the operator doesn't know which one to choose, so you actually have to tell it the name of the instrumentation resource that you want to use. And then finally, if you have your instrumentation resource deployed in a different namespace from the one where your application deployment is deployed, then you have to specify the namespace name slash instrumentation name. So you re replace that in place of that true false value. That's all well and good, it might seem straightforward. You're like, all right, I got this, figured out this auto instrumentation stuff. But we all know that when it comes time to implement these things, they rarely work. And believe me, the first time I tried hotel operator auto instrumentation, it no worky. So I'm gonna go through some of the stuff that I went through as I was discovering the, uh, this functionality. So here we go. First off, was your instrumentation resource deployed? Good question, right? Um, may seem silly, but I have gone through the motions of thinking I deployed a resource when it didn't deploy, oops. So you can check to make sure that it deployed by running this command, kubectl describe hotel inst dash n, and enter your namespace, and this will list your the details for your hotel um, auto in, your auto instrumentation resource. So um, if it's missing, it's going to be blank. If you have an instrumentation resource, it'll pop all the details there. Okay, the next thing is you need to check the order of deployment of your instrumentation resources. So actually more specifically, um, when you deploy, when you configure the auto instrumentation, first you have to deploy your instrumentation resource, and then you have to deploy your deployment resource. This order is extremely important. It can't be deployment followed by instrumentation. And you might be wondering why. Well, because when you deploy your deployment, what happens is it goes to the operator, and it's going to try to create an init container. Now, it does this, but it needs to look for that instrumentation resource to be present. So if that instrumentation resource isn't present, it doesn't know how to configure out an instrumentation, can't create that init container, and then instrumentation will not happen. So even if you deploy that instrumentation resource after the fact, too bad, so sad, auto instrumentation will not happen. Um, so to check to make sure that that init container has been created, you run this command here. It took me a while to find it. Um, it's a bit hairy, but this will list all of the init containers for your deployment. And one of the init containers that should be listed would be something along the lines of an auto instrumentation init container. So if it's not present, then you know something's wrong. Okay, the next thing is check those auto instrumentation annotations. So in your deployment, there are two spots where you can specify your annotations. One is in your main metadata section. This is wrong, do not put it there. The other is in your template metadata section. Section. This is the correct place. If you put it in the main metadata section, it will not work. Believe me, I've done that by accident. Um, you can pull your hair all you want. It's still not going to work. So in addition to that, um, you need to make sure that your annotation is actually correct. So first of all, make sure that you're auto-instrumenting the correct language. Wouldn't it suck if you were saying, hey, I'm going to inject Python, but the application pod is actually running a Java container, oopsie. And then the other thing, make sure that the value of the annotation is correct, because if you have multiple instrumentation resources and you've set that value to true, the operator is not going to know which one to pick. You have to tell it which one. You have to specify that instrumentation name. And again, if the instrumentation resource is in a different namespace, you have to specify the namespace slash instrumentation name. Okay, and then we've got our endpoint configurations. 
So in the instrumentation resource, we have a lovely section here where we specify the endpoint. So that can be an OTEL collector that's running either within or outside of your Kubernetes cluster. If it's running inside your Kubernetes cluster, um, make sure that you are referencing the service name of your OTEL collector. Now, if the collector is running in the same namespace as your instrumentation resource, no problem, just specify the service name. However, if that collector is running outside of that namespace, then you have to include the fully qualified service name. So that includes the namespace, which in my case is open telemetry, and then include also .svc.cluster.local. In addition to that, we need to specify the port number of our OTEL collector, which is 4317 for gRPC, 4318 for HTTP. However, for Python, it only, auto instrumentation only works with HTTP, so you gotta use 4318. And for more info on that, you can scan the QR code on your screen. And then finally, in case you're running your collector as a sidecar, um, you need to use localhost instead of your service name because as Reese pointed out, it is not deployed as a pod and so you're not gonna find it anywhere if you try to specify the service name. So use localhost instead. And again, make sure if you're using Python for auto instrumentation, you're using 4318. And then finally, when all things, when all other things are not working, check the operator logs. Um, now, mind you, you do have to have admin access to your Kubernetes cluster to be able to do that, so maybe make friends with a Kubernetes admin if, you're, uh, if you don't have access to those logs, or as Reese mentioned, also running that kubectl um, event command will also help you if you don't have admin access. So. That is it. I'm going to summarize now what we've learned really quickly. So if you paid, if you didn't pay any attention to anything in this talk, take the last, take pictures of the last two slides because that'll sum everything up. So first of all, make sure that if you're um, using Cert Manager, you install that first. Make sure that's fully installed before you install the operator. Secondly, make sure those resources are deployed, making sure your instrumentation resource is deployed, making sure that OTEL collector resource is deployed. And if you're deploying the open telemetry collector resource, making sure that the accompanying resources have deployed as well those pods for your collector, corresponding config maps. If you're doing sidecar, making sure that that sidecar actually got deployed in your deployment. Um, in addition, checking that API version for the open telemetry collector resource because there are two different API versions, so don't get them mixed up, otherwise it's not gonna work. Um, check your deployment order for auto instrumentation, making sure that instrumentation is deployed before your deployment. Um, make sure that your annotations are added to the right place. It's got to be under template metadata, otherwise it no worky. Um, check your endpoint configurations, making sure that you're pointing to the correct service name for your OTEL collector if it's running in your Kubernetes cluster, or that local host value if you're doing the sidecar deployment. And check the operator logs for errors if all else fails, and if you're super savvy with said, look for the word error. And that is it. These are some handy resources that we've put together for you, um, including the blog post version of this talk with all the gory details. Um, also, we didn't have a demo for this talk, but I do have a demo repo that I use for another talk that has a full-fledged example of basically the open telemetry operator resource and instrumentation setup, so you can check that out. Um, also, the folks on the OTEL operator Slack on CNCF are super, super friendly and helpful. So if you have any OTEL operator questions, do reach out to them because they've always been super great um, whenever I've asked my many, many questions. Um, and then some shameless self-promotions. Um, I have a podcast called Geeking Out, and I've had really awesome guests on my podcast, including Kelsey Hightower, Liz Fong Jones, Hazel Weekly, and the awesome Reese. And also the OTEL um, end user SIG is running a survey until the end of this week, so until the 15th. We want to know how you use the open telemetry docs. Uh, love them or hate them, we want to hear from you uh, because it's going to help us improve the docs. And um, finally, thank you so much for attending our talk. And big thanks to Reese and her cat, Taco, who made an excellent slide model. And I was honestly laughing my ass off when I was going through the slides. So yeah, thank you, everyone. Hope you learned something cool today. Thank you.